Hello! Ten reviews in ten minutes twelve. The Dirty Dozen. <laughs> I love the intros because I never know what you're going to say and it always, it always throws me off. So... <laughs> this means you've encrusted all these items in filth, hopefully. <laughs> Just run them through a muddy puddle. Here you go, mate, on the sofa. Yeah. It's too late for the sofa. That fucking Star Wars putty from yeah. Poundland. Didn't realise it leaked. Oh, God. It's not much time now before this thing has to get um, disposed of. I know. I know. <clears throat> if you're a big company and you have lots of money and want to sponsor a new sofa, please do get in touch, because this one's fuck sword. <laughs> <sighs> Deary me. Cool. Right. Ten items. Ten minutes. Let's review them all. Let's set up the mighty phone first. Yeah. Oh, God. Where is the round timer? Uh... I should have said that before. I'll try and cover you, Stu. Oh, uh, have you. Uh, so, how about that weather, eh? <laughs> <laughs> how about that local sports team? <laughs> right. How about that football? Let's start. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, bloody hell. Ding a ding a ling. So, uh, actually, following on from the last one, there's still a load of items left over from the comic convention, MCM. And this is one from The Adventures of Merlin, like a. Program I never really watched. Never watched it. It was BBC. Yeah, it was. Was it like a sort of tweeny drama sort of thing based around a young Merlin, presumably? Just looking at it, I always thought it was kind of thing where it's like, hey, Harry Potter, we'll try and do something with Harry Potter type thingies. Oh, Merlin! Yeah, and it feels a bit like an extension of that old Robin Hood series as well. Yeah. yeah. So this is exclusive numbered edition, ninety-five out of five hundred of Gaius, who, as you can tell here, is played by. I don't believe it, Richard. Um, oh, what's his surname? Richard I don't, I don't. from uh, One Foot in the Grave. Oh, that's going to annoy me. Uh, the figure doesn't really look much like him. It's quite detailed, but just looks like a different person. And we looked at the back, yeah, and it seems to just be a normal figure with a bit of paper badly slipped in. Maybe that's worth something to somebody. They'll be oh. around the blocks for that one. <laughs> Arthur is really pouting on that, my God. Oh, right. <clears throat> <laughs> You know I get distracted by a pantyhose. So these fucking... I was trying to find these for the Halloween special I'd bought them for, and I obviously put them in the bloody spare box by accident. All right. Well, there we are. We finally get to see 15 pack of Fright Night spooky bouncy balls. I'm really curious to find out what's so spooky about them. Yeah, it's, it's nothing particularly spooky. They're bouncy rubber balls. You can't just put them in the back and say they're spooky because they're green and black. Haunted by the ghosts of... Uh, Bouncy men <laughs> <laughs> of Thing on a Spring, the old uh, video game character. Uh, the thing about these is, apart from the fact they're rubbish, I was expecting staples then, but it's blue. Um, you can't just say green and black are spooky. What other things are green and black? Maybe are they spooky? The scariest of colours. It's placed not. together. There's a, a chocolate company called Green and Blacks. Hmm. Like are they spooky? Spooky? Oh, you can just see made in China. Do they bounce particularly well? Yes. Yeah, they're not too bad, actually. Oh, my God, this thing's been knocking around for donkey's years. Right, uh, this is not Lightning McQueen. This is Lightning McSteve. Yeah, it's ugly brother. Oh, it's got, like, a number two. It looks like a, a snake, a pooey snake. Yeah, they did not do a good job making him. What is going on here? They're just sort of weird indentations. It is basically a dog toy version. Made in China by Greenbrier International. There's a name we know a lot from the channel. Turbo Wheels, Vinyl Town Car. The problem here is that... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, God, no, I'm wasting time. Well, well, this happened last time we yeah, bloody yeah, recorded one of these. What happen. is it? It must be the dust and all the stuff we're getting out. Get, you see, that sneeze is going to come over to me in a little bit. Yeah, it probably is. It happened last time. Bloody hell. Oh. Every time, Dan, every time. So yeah, the wheels don't even go round. Uh, it's basically a dog toy. He is a fucking dog. He even squeaks. Turbo wheels, my bum. Also, it's got weird goggly eyes. Right. Oh, no, this is interesting. Somebody gave me this from CERN, the place of science. <laughs> the headquarters of science. science. Where science lives. <laughs> hey, can I see Mr. Science? Is but he in? But isn't science a concept? No, it's a place. <laughs> it's a place. Yes, it is. We store it in CERN. <laughs> and this is what they store it on. This is an authentic Large Hadron Collider data tape souvenir. This cartridge contains one terabyte of Large Hadron Collector... Uh, Large Hadron Collider data. There, I said it right, frankly. Mm. 600,000 proton-to-proton collision events at 8 
TVs. 30 minutes of data taking, perhaps even a big Higgs boson event. You'll never know because you don't have the device to read it <laughs> or the training necessary to understand what it's, it's saying. A big block of uh, uh, plastic, basically. So, yeah, well, yeah, but there's tape inside it. You can't see that. Oh, you can't quite see that on camera. tape. Oh, you want to see the tape, don't you? Oh, you love that tape. <laughs> so, real oh, let's not read that because we're running out of bloody time. Ah, oh, it's Tim Roth, the action figure. Tim Roth, eh? Tim Roth, he's a fantastic actor. He is, isn't he? I first saw him, I think, in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, Pulp, I think is Pulp Fiction then went back to watch Reservoir Dogs. Oh, God, yeah, he was in Reservoir Dogs. Of course he was in Reservoir Dogs. He was Mr. Turncoat. He was. Which, which colour was he? Orange? Uh, I feel like saying orange. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Or was Harvey Keitel Mr. Orange? No, I think he was. Mm, I've confused myself. That doesn't really matter, does it? So if you're wondering why there is what is quite obviously a G.I. Joe figure of the time with Tim Roth's head, it's because it was to do with um, the Incredi Hulk, yeah, the Incredible yeah. Hulk, the Edward Norton version of the Hulk, nobody yes. Like, nobody likes that film, but I actually quite enjoyed it. It's not that bad. It's all right. It's better than the Ang Lee one, where yeah. they tried to go all sort of deep and it just kind of didn't work. You played Abomination. Yeah, the Abomination. Emil something or other, I can't remember his name. It was a sort of very uh, Eastern European sounding name. And gets turned into a horrible monster. But beforehand, he is this character, and it was sold like a larger Hulk figure. And another G.I. Joe repaint with like a thing on. And that's enough. You sit there. Oh, he can't sit down because he's got a little skirt on his jacket. Oh, God, give no. That was horrible. And um, speaking of G.I. it's another bloody G.I. Joe, but of a very different type. This is uh, Roadblock, and it's of some weird range they did of just cute little versions of Disney characters and G.I. Joe carrying everything else. Mm. Virtually no articulation. Move the waist. Move that up and down. <laughs> that was exciting, wasn't it? <sighs> seemed to, yeah. So, sorry, so what's he from? G.I. Joe. <laughs> 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 Which I used yeah, to sing it on yeah. the thing. Uh, he, in a movie version, I believe he was portrayed by Dwayne The Rock Johnson oh. in G.I. Joe Retaliation. The... Yeah, I never saw the films, unfortunately. But... The first film is a hot mess. It's crazy. It was written during the writer's strike, and it's just got loads of crazy bullshit. And it's quite entertaining for that reason. The second one is probably one of the most boring action films ever made. Mm. It's just utter, utter poop from start to finish. I'll be sure to pick it up from your local blockbuster. Please don't, because they've all closed down. Oh, bugger, that's running away! Ah. Yeah. Oh, man, this, yeah, this was a promotional item. Where are we? Brain Feeder Films presents Cream, a film by David Firth. So this is uh, David Firth of Salad Fingers and Burnt Face Man fame. What's up, Salad Fingers? Shout up to your boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, You've no, seen no, it. It's um, just a prank, brah. It's <laughs> just a social experiment. <laughs> so we went to see it in a cinema, uh, his new short film of his Cream, which was very, very good, as you would expect from Mr Firth. And on each seat was a free pot of the cream, as shown in the actual short. I won't tell you what the short's about, because that'll spoil it. But if you sniff of it. And it looks, it's quite obviously marshmallow fluff. I do deduce that it's marshmallow fluff. So did my friend Mickey, who I went with, and he took a bit on his finger and ate it, and it's not marshmallow fluff, because when we looked at the bottom, we discovered that it's in fact body butter. <laughs> <laughs> and you're supposed to massage it onto your skin <laughs> and not eat it at all. So you end up with a mouthful of soap, poor old Mickey. Oh my god. Gamma go! Birdhouse pencil sharpener. Your pencil is the perch. That that's a t-shirt phrase, isn't it? Wow. Your pencil is the perch. Alright, so make a little birdhouse in your soul with uh, the birdhouse sharpener will have your pencils all a Twitter. Uh -huh. Oh it looks like a Twitter thing, right. Gamma girl. I'm not aware of this. This is a very thick. How do I actually put into I don't know. Uh, that doesn't do anything for me. Well, I'm going to love it as if it was my own puppy. I can't. Fact, it tries to sell itself at the cheapest time. Yeah, That's that me. doesn't actually please me, Grant. Does the bird come? Oh, I thought this was going to be like a pencil eraser or something. No, it doesn't even come out. So it is the Twitter bird. I don't actually have a pencil to. Um, Sharpen with it, so we're just going to imagine what it could be like. Uh, ah, right, so it collects your shavings, that's something. I actually quite like that as a pencil sharpener. It's not a bad thing. Unfortunately, it's, um, it's mm. it, the misstep part, I can't forgive it for that. You can't forgive the pun. I can't you forgive can the You can never forgive you, you have a pencil! Oh, God! Yes, I do. Also, I will... Where the bloody hell did I... Honestly, I really like that pencil because it's so... Um, if you read the actual names... Kitsch or what? So this is like a 70s of the time Star Wars branded pencil with horrible things on it. Uh, 1982 this was made. It's the genuine articles. It certainly is. So there's Luke looking very poncy and with very yellow hair. And there's Leia doing a runner wearing red boots, which is slightly weird. Read the uh, the names, how they've kind of like put them on this. Star Wars, what are those? Luke Sky Prince. 
Luke Sky Princes. Luke Sky Princess. <laughs> wow. My favourite characters, Luke Sky Princess and uh, Walker Trademark, Leia Trademark. <laughs> Walker, Leia Texas Ranger. You probably went through great oh lengths God. to make oh. sure they got it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, this probably hasn't been sharpened since 1982, actually. Oh, look at this. It's coming up a treat. Good work, tweeting thing. And it's even got a, a used, heavily used rubber on the end. That is so, so gaudy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh bizarre thing. And finally, oh my God. Did you, um, have you tested this when you put it in the box? Or you have, just, have a, have a, have a. Um, have, do you know what this does? <laughs> Well, it's a jukebox, so I'm guessing it's, a, it's another pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would make sense, but uh, no, this still has batteries in, I think. I'm going to check. Yes, it does have batteries in. So, <laughs> basically, it's a toy jukebox that plays music. I'm slightly worried about playing it, though, because in case it's like a copyrighted song. I tell you what, we'll play it now, Yes. and if there's a copyright problem, I'll do a test upload. Um, we'll just have to dub it with something else, like a duck. Nice. Or me going, Italian music, because it's like an Italian song, if I recall. <laughs> Ready, steady. <laughs> Italian music. 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 I kind of love that because it's so distorted and so loud and it just goes on forever. It's Italian. It is, I, I believe. I, I believe. I we should Shazam it. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, let's yeah, do this thing. Let's do that. Jump cut, jump cut. Right, we did, um, well, Dan did Soundhound and I did Shazam and they came up with the same result. Yes. So I'm going to guess that was correct. It was 24,000 Kisses by Little Tony. Little Tony. Little Tony, an ickle Tony, only that big, but he's got a <laughs> recording career. Um, yeah, so it's an Italian song, as we had guessed. We'd, I looked up um, Mila Bacci in Google Translate and it said a thousand bugs. I thought the song was called 24,000 Bugs. That's a strange thing. I thought that's very odd. Um, but apparently it also translates as kisses, or I just spelt it wrong or something. All oh, right. I was going to say, little Tony, what, where, where are you going thematically with this? So, yeah, what is happening in your life? Are you covered in horrible, horrible um, insects? Song, and decide to write a song about it. The song is about him being bitten 24,000 times by these bugs and him finding some sort of uh, soda cream to actually you know, help him alleviate his itching. A lot of Italian songs of that period are about itching, yeah. so that I could believe that. You never know. So yeah, it's Venti Quattro Mila Bacci. Okay. And I looked up the lyrics. <clears throat> it goes, With 24,000 kisses today, I know why love. Once in a while, once, 1,000 kisses. 1,000 caresses every hour. With 24,000 kisses, hours pass by happily. It's a beautiful day because I get to kiss you every second. Jesus Christ, I'm not being funny, Tony, but you're smothering the... the poor yeah, man. yeah, she's going to be worried. This is like a red flag, Tony. You know it's going to problem. Um, looking up also, the most famous version was recorded by Adriano Celentano, who is a very famous uh, Italian uh, singer. And songwriter type who uh, have you ever heard prison colon oh god i've got to remember now prison colon cindy no choose old i'm not actually that familiar with with the name but I'm... I'm not surprised it's quite it's, it's something that comes up on the internet every so often it's a song he wrote mm. prison colon cindy no choose old aha uh -huh. and <laughs> the concept is it's what italian people hear when they listen listen to a song in english but they don't speak english that's really interesting. So it's like phonetically, hey, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> this kind of utter nonsense. But how they learnt it and performed it together, I've got no idea, because none of the words mean anything apart from the occasional oh yeah or uh huh, you know. <laughs> That's amazing. That's I'll really play it for you later, not on here, because we'll get done for copyright, as we probably have done for this and I had to edit it out. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a problem. Oh my God, boys. I tell you what, if we should. Um, Put a, like a link below to where they can hear the song, just in case. Maybe. But if it does go through, all right, I'll just edit this bit out. Yeah. Don't forget to uh, follow me on Twitter and Snapchat. Uh, links are in yeah, the description. Yeah, it's your boy Tomlinson. It's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Here on Snapagram and Instachat. <laughs> we get some more social experimentation coming up where we punch a nun. Yeah. Remember, if you like the video, don't forget to share it with your nan, your dad, your grandma. Your great grandma, your distant relative, your third cousin, second removed, 
All right, I'll see you later. All right, wait, peace out. It was just a prank, bro. <laughs> You've seen too many of these videos. You oh, know man, exactly what it was like. I, it's not I've seen too many of these videos. It's rather YouTube is becoming saturated with these videos, and it's, 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 a, it's a terrible thing. There's always something. There's always something that's the uh, sort of flavour of the month, isn't yeah. there? When they find out that that gets around the algorithm temporarily. I think so. I, mean, I do think so. Or was it before? It's probably something like... At one point, it was... Playthroughs, wasn't it? Like oh god, yeah. Actually, we'd better go and finish our latest video for our Minecraft Let's Play channel. <laughs>